Hello friends, my name is Ari Thurger and this is the second part of the Norse Afterlife, using the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim from Bethesda to illustrate this subject. On the previous video I have talked about the concept of religion and the spirit. Our view of the world was greatly influenced by religions which are based on the negation of reality, religion for the individual, separation between matter and spirit, and the spirit which can't be divided. On the other hand, a Norse Germanic pagan view of the world is quite different and in most aspects it's the opposite of the religions that shaped our modern societies. Everything I have spoken on the previous video must be taken into consideration if we are going to speak about the afterlife in the perspective of the ancient Scandinavian societies. We are used to certain ideas brought by Christianity, and such ideas are so carved in our social minds that it's hard to see the world from another point of view. When we read Norse mythology for the first time, everything seems out of place. Vague ideas, pure fantasy that does not quite fit into a religious perspective. But that's because we do not have the same worldview of the ancient pagan Norse. Understanding their perspective on life and the relation with the divine, everything else in Norse mythology, the sagas and folk tales start to make perfect sense. On this video I'm going to talk about the concept of the underworld, the ancestors and also the Draugr. But let's start with Hel, the realm of the dead. As you know, with Christianity, Hel became associated with the infernal realm of the Christian faith. And even in anthropological, archaeological and historical studies we couldn't let go the idea of Hel being a spiritual realm. Even our Norse ancestors started to see Hell as a spiritual world when they came in contact with Christian ideas. By the time the Norse started to record their spirituality into parchment, they were already Christianized, so it's perfectly natural that their spiritual perspectives change. But if we take a look at the pre-Christian Germanic societies, the concept of Hell wasn't spiritual but literally beneath the earth. The pre-Christian Norse saw the underworld as something literal, the earth right under our feet, where previous generations are buried. At first it seemed strange, but let's take a few factors into consideration. First, the places where the dead were buried were considered sacred sites. Secondly, the tombs were doors to access the world of the dead, literally. Thirdly, the dead who were recognized for their influence on luck and fertility during life were worshipped with the same respect people worshipped the gods themselves. For instance, Alfdan the Black, a 9th century king of Vestfold, Norway. His body was divided into four parts, taken to different locations of his kingdom in order to maintain the fertility of such regions. And finally, the dead were commonly buried with various objects such as weapons, food, tools and various things that indicate not a tribute pure and simple, but things that can be used in the afterlife. The underground is the home of the dead, while the surface is a gateway we use to be in contact with the dead. As I have said in the previous video, the Norse believed that matter and spirit are not separated. As such, it makes perfect sense that axes, spears and other objects were left with whoever was being buried. The dead person could use the objects left in the burial mound. In many societies we see the importance of certain mountains and hills as entrances to the underworld, places to be in contact with the dead or the realm of the dead itself. For instance, the Huluru, a rock formation which is one of Australia's most recognizable natural landscapes. It's filled with aboriginal myths, legends and traditions concerning the dead, the ancestors and an entrance to the underworld. In Scandinavian history we have the Helgafell, the holy mountain, in Iceland which also has its tales concerning the dead and the underworld and going inside it to be with the ancestors. The belief that mountains are gateways to the underworld is a prehistoric belief carved in the old traditions before another religion came with new ideas and concepts about the afterlife and changed all of that. The mountains were also commonly understood as the dwellings of elves. The elves were not only seen as spirits of the land but also ancestors or that in which some ancestors would become when revered in a special way. The cult of the ancestors makes perfect sense if we continue to understand the spirit as something that can be divided. If we can divide our spirit with others, the spirit being linked with family members, members of the tribe and so on, 
this connection is also maintained with the ancestors. The matter isn't separated from the spirit, therefore we are still linked to the ancestors. The dead were not seen apart from the living, they were part of the lives of the living. They were not only revered in appreciation for what they did in life, even after death, they were still part of the life of the family. The dead were the family members of the other side that still interacted with the living. This is why offerings were left to the dead, to ensure a continuation in the friendship and respect between the living and the dead. Speaking of the dead, this is when we have to speak about the Draugr. A very important part of the concept of life after death, especially among the Germanic and the Norse, were the Draugr, the animated dead. A Draugr was a sort of a living dead. Of course, the concept we have of Draugr nowadays is of something that resembles a zombie, but that's a very Southern American concept. The European concept of the living dead varies. The Draugr is sometimes seen as a ghost, but again, it was shaped by our modern view. The Draugr is not just a ghost that only inflicts psychological damage. The Draugr is an animated corpse with great strength that can physically attack living humans. Of course, the zombie is very similar, but that is a mindless creature under the control of something or someone, which has no free will. The Draugr had a sort of conscience. It was animated by the spirit, and even though it remained in its tomb, it continued to haunt the living human community. In the sagas, the decapitation or cremation of the body was the only way to destroy a Draugr, much like a vampire. In this case, it shows that the destruction of the material body seems to release the Hamr, the spiritual form. In our modern minds, bodies rarely remain attached to the spirit of the dead. The destruction of the body does not imply the destruction of the spirit. One worldview believes in the separation of the body and spirit, and another believes that matter and spirit cannot be separated. Through the concept of Draugr, we see that the Norse believed that matter and spirit were linked and couldn't be separated, therefore the Draugr itself is linked to the place of its burial and to the way the dead were respected or worshipped by the living. This is one of the reasons I like this game, Skyrim. The Draugr here are not soulless, mindless zombies with no purpose whatsoever. The Draugr in here resembles the Norse concept of matter being linked to the spirit. In here this creature is animated by the spirit, it has a conscience, it's intelligent, it has a purpose and it's still very much in contact with the living because death does not belong to another reality, rather it's part of this world. Alright friends, thank you so much for watching, this subject will have a third part, so I'll see you on the next video. Talk for it all.